Hi guys, today is the 11th of January 2023 and today I'm going to be channeling James Herriot and James Herriot's real name was James Alfred Wright and um, for those of you that don't know James Herriot was a pseudonym and the books were by James Herriot but the author's real name was James Alfred Wright, his full name was James Alfred Wright and because he was a veterinary surgeon at the time, in for legal reasons, and I, I imagine it'll probably be the same now, he had to, because he wanted to write a series of books, he had to change his name. So to make it simple, I'm going to just keep calling him James Herriot rather than changing his name all the time, okay? And it's really weird because before I came onto camera today, just after my lunch, um... I started to feel like, not that I didn't want to do the video, but really nervous. And I thought, what is this? Because I've not felt like this until since I first started on YouTube and I felt really nervous. And I was like, what is this? And I've just gone on briefly to watch a brief video of him being interviewed. And as I was watching it, I remembered that I'd read somewhere that actually he hated fame. And he hated all the intrusion and the press intrusion. And not that he got like the press intrusion like we see celebrities of today getting. But he was a very private man. He was a vet, a Yorkshire vet. And you could see it in that interview. And I thought, yeah, that's why I'm picking up this energy of, for all he wants to talk to us, he feels very shy. It's like a really shy energy. That's what I'm thinking. Um, so he was born on the 3rd of October, 1916. So again, another man from another era. And honestly, I actually really need to do this today because um, <laughs> of a certain book that I'm gearing up to read. And I think it's going to be today that I start reading it. And I don't know about you, but I just need to spend some time with someone like James Herriot. Be it reading the books, be it watching the series, either the old series or the new series that they're now doing on Channel 5. I just need to be with someone or something that just is not toxic. It's not narcissistic. It's not dirty. It's not, it's, it's just lovely, heartwarming, simple, wholesome conversation, companionship and grounding. And I've got, in front of me, I've got a mixture of crystals. I've chosen brown crystals, green crystals. I've chosen earthy colours because obviously it was a bet, a, a bet, a vet in the Yorkshire Dales. We've got the, and my ear is ringing, my ear is ringing. We've got the Wild Root Tarot. We won't be looking at his own life. We're going to be looking this video. He came forward to do this video about animals. So this is not a deep dive into his life, into his family life. That's off limits, it's private. And that's not because it was dark, that's because he's a private man. And he's and what I'm hearing is he's saying, I'm a vet first and then the private man. So it's almost like before you even get to his private life, you've got to go through his veterinary, if that makes sense. And um, that's what he wants to talk about. He wants to talk about animals. I've got a list of stuff, listen to this. He wants to talk about dog and cat cafes, okay, and grooming parlours. He wants to talk about the modern day vets, animals and speech, Reiki and animals, the cost of living crisis and animal care, um, animals and the ascension process and dog crime. So you're going to see me looking down a lot and you're going to see me doing a lot of ticking just so I don't miss any of those bits. OK, there will be other stuff as well he wants to talk about. But when we've been putting the notes together, these are the areas that he feels a lot of people that own animals, pets, farmers want to talk about, um, plus other things. Um, yeah, so let me know in the comments if you really need this, because it's got really cold, like really cold. Um, He's saying this because we're on the North Yorkshire Moors with him. We're on, the, not, we're on the North, we're on the Yorkshire Dales, the Yorkshire Dales. And he's showing me the Yorkshire Dales. And he's showing us all an aspect of himself there when it was cold and barren. And he's saying sometimes when he'd go out on a call, he'd be caught out and not have the proper equipment or the proper coats, the proper wellies, the proper um, 
you say, you know, you look at vets now and they go out and they've got the full everything. They didn't have that. And sometimes it'd be damn cold up there, damn cold up there. Um, there's something about animals as well in the cold at the minute. We'll come back to that. So, he was born on the 3rd of October 1916, I've already told you that. He died on the 23rd of February 1995. So, we've got number 22, life number 22, overcoming obstacles. And what's that you've written, Claire, that you don't understand? Overcoming obstacles and... I haven't made that clear what I've put there. So, overcoming obstacles, there's probably a reason for that. But that's not clear. Um, four, practical towards practical towards life and down to earth, um, honest, loyal, trustworthy. So here is someone that's down to earth, honest, loyal, trustworthy, um, a nice, nice person. When I was writing these notes, and this might be a reason why some of this is really squiggly. Um, I had real issues writing, real issues writing. The amount of lines I've had to line through things and I was writing and I was just, my, my hand just wouldn't work. I'm not sure if he had some form of, not learning difficulty, but I know when I've done, when I did a bit of research yesterday, he struggled to pass his exams and he had to, I think they back then they did different modules and he struggled with some of the modules, not the veterinary side, not the hands-on physical care of the animal, but the academic side. He also drew, drew my attention to modern day veterinary practices where he showed me basically a tablet that they're all having to use, like um, an electronic database. NHS are doing the same thing. The hospitals are doing the same things. Everything's on something electrical. And what he showed me was the fact that these processes that vets have to go through now are so complex that their mind is all focused on this database, this software that they're having to use. And it's taking them away from the animal care. And they're that focused. And he says he's not judging them for this. He's not judging the vets. He knows that this is something that's coming from the agricultural society, the, the veterinary society, the farming, the, from the powers that were above them. Um, but it's taking their attention away from the actual care. And he's saying a lot of vets, not all vets, are losing their holistic abilities with the vets. He says he was actually quite good at communicating with animals and he's going to talk to us about that. Talking via voice and also talking in the head to the animal. And he says you can actually talk to an animal, be it your cat, your dog, your hamster, your rabbit, your farm animals, even without using your voice. But he is going to talk about the fact of animals and maybe in future them being able to use a voice. You like um, budgies do. This is going to be interesting. Um, and he says a lot of them just are not doing that. Okay. So let me start at the beginning rather than woofing off on something else. So what started this? We started watching the channel four. The channel sorry, apologies. The channel five version, um, which is the new, the new, the newly updated series of James Herriot and All Creatures Great and Small. And I really loved it. I really loved all the actors in it. I really loved the way it's been done, the tasteful way it's been done, that they've kept the nostalgia around it. They kept, they've kept the good feel, the good, the good heartwarming feeling about it. I think he actually struggled with his nerves because I'm really feeling it, really feeling it. It's like a really shaky thing. He hated it. I feel as though he actually hated the whole... I didn't feel as though he was in a rock and a hard place because I think... He was, I don't even think of it, think it, I know it. He was a creator. He was a creator with animals as a vet, but he was also a writer. And actually, it feels as though, for although he had to write in this lifetime, I'm actually feeling a bit of Bronte energy. Um, and I actually felt this when I was walking around the house. So we'll look at that, okay, because I've got Bronte heritage as well. Um, and it was almost like, you know, when the Bronte sisters did their books and then the fame came and obviously it was Charlotte that was left. And it was like, I didn't expect it to go that quick. I'm literally holding myself like that. I didn't expect it to go that quick. I didn't expect to become that famous that quick. I didn't expect to have the doors float, float, fly open. And really struggling with anxiety, with 
fame and fortune and gala dinners and having to deal with actors and actresses and producers and directors and I feel as though he used to get quite het up around the filming. I know that he was quite protective on it and he didn't want them to go too far away from the books. I'm just going to hold myself like this because I feel as though not only am I doing it for myself, but I'm doing it for him, okay? Um, maybe this is something he had to do for himself as well. It just as though he had to hold himself there. So we watched, we watched the Channel 5, it's really, it's really struggling, really struggling. I think this is something he wants to talk to people about as well. That there's many people like him that have great gifts, great gifts of singing or writing or art or acting and actually struggle with the incoming of fame and the, however whatever level of fame that is and it just feels as though it's settling down now then it just feels as though it's settling because it's important to, i mean james knows james Herrick knows that he's amongst friends whilst we're doing this so he's not as though he's out on the tv there's just something about his privacy I'll just let that energy settle. So we watched, this is interesting energy, this is, you wouldn't expect this. For those of you that have read the books, that have watched the series, that know what you know about James Herriot. Um, yeah, it's interesting, interesting. And it's actually quite good when this happens because sometimes as, as a channel, as a reader, you can have a doubt in Thomas moment. And sometimes you think, is this how I get in it? You are everyone. Everyone who was a healer or a reader gets this moment. It's not a Doubting Thomas moment. It's Well, it is a Doubting Thomas moment, but this isn't what I'm feeling. When you feel something like this come in, it's like, no, this is real. This is, this is real. This is, you're feeling into someone's vulnerability, someone's aside to their character that we've not seen or it's not been spoken about and actually the video that i've just watched of him he was very much like this he wasn't doing this but you could see him a bit like princess Diana used to put a head down used to put a head down used to put a head down and a little giggle and put the head down um he found comfort in animals he's saying i found comfort in animals he struggled with people he really struggled with people He's saying, my, my circle was really small, really small. And he was okay with the villagers and he was okay, but anything outside of his comfort zone, the, I've said it, the directors, the producers, the actors, the writers, the editors, the publishers, he really struggled with, really struggled with it. So... He's saying, he's showing us this because many people are struggling with anxiety at the minute and many people are struggling with overwhelm and that's okay. That It's okay to not be able to cope. He says there's a lot of information out there of you've got to be your best, you've got to get up and get going, you've got to face your fears, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to do... But actually, he says people are gentle souls. He says people are gentle souls that can't cope with the outside world. And that's okay. He's saying that's okay. And it's okay to be you. It's okay to be a gentle soul. It's okay to be able to... He's saying it's okay to just be comfortable with animals and not people. He says that's actually perfectly normal. And he's saying you're not alone. He's also saying this is not just some... This is, this is something else that I'm feeling into with this is his fear for animals at the minute. And a lot of you that have... 
a love of animals like you're you're probably living a vegan life a vegetarian life or if you are eating meat you're eating eth ethically sourced meat are actually feeling a tremor a lot of you are feeling this severe he's saying it's severe anxiety around animals and, and around mother earth and around how we're abusing animals in all kinds of forms and he's saying a lot of animals are feeling this as well. So this anxiety isn't just his. He's show, he's bringing it in quite strong because he says he's, it's important that we realise just what the animals are feeling like at the minute. Um, a lot of animals are feeling confused. A lot of animals are feeling our pain as well. A lot of animals, all animals, all kinds, the birds, the fishes, the everything, every animal... Somebody's got their hand on my head there. Um, they're all feeling this that we're feeling. He said it will settle. It will settle. And we are actually going to do some work at the end of this video, similar to the last one we did. But rather than the healing being for us, it's going to be for the animals. So let's get sorry about this. I think I think the people that are going to be watching this are going to be animal lovers and they're going to need me to do this. They're going to need to see this experience that I'm having and that he's bringing forward because I think a lot of you are feeling this. It's almost like a really shaky feeling. Um, yeah, just let it go. Just let it so we can carry on with the video. I'll just take it off me for a, a bit. He's actually, this is, this is interesting. You know, we talk about Mother Earth. He's actually showing me Father Earth. He's showing me Father, Father Earth. Have we, ever, have we heard of Father Earth before? Yo, interesting. We'll, we'll, we'll get to the introduction bit. When you're channeling, so you work with their frequency and what they want to do. He's showing me a, a being called Father Earth. And he's saying that Father Earth is going to rise up. Mother Earth is the overall energy. She's the. He said it's very much. It's very. He's taking it into right. Remember, we're dealing with a man from the ninth, from the early, from the late. Well, nineteen sixteen. So he's going to be very different to what we are, okay? And what the very different perceptions of society. He's, he's basically what he's saying is, Mother Earth is the birther of the Earth. Father Earth is the hunter gatherer. Father Earth is the one that's going to protect the animals, and he's saying it's Father Earth that is going to cause a kickback. This isn't a kickback to punish humans. And this is really important I say that. But we're going to have to wake up to how we're treating animals. So Father Earth, and this is not just Father Earth going, I'm going to deal with you. It's almost like Father Earth is going to bring something up for humans to make us look at how we treat animals. To make us look at how we kill animals to eat to make us look at how we look after animals so we've not just got mother earth we've got father earth beautiful um so it's not a punishment because i know sometimes you know like people say that the virus was punishment to, you know because of it this is i'm not going to go down a covid room i'm not going to go down a covid room um but you know with the bat thing and everything Oh, it was a punishment to humans. It's not a pun. This isn't punishment, but this is our own making. We're not looking after animals correctly. When these are our pets as well, not everybody, but there's a big portion of society that are not looking after animals correctly, and they need holistically looking after. Okay. So we watched. Let's come back a bit. We watched the Channel Five, and I loved it. Really loved it. And Gary said to me, my husband, oh. I, as in my husband, Gary, I've watched the old version of it. And I, I know my parents watched it, Nana and stuff. But I think when it was on, I was too young. And you were at that age as a child. I'm watching all creatures great and small. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, I'll watch it. So we watched it. Love Siegfried. 
the old-fashioned Siegfried. I, I loved that character. I, and I felt his energy around coming in with James. And I loved it. And we said, oh, because obviously we, we lived in Yorkshire. We now live in Lincolnshire. We moved to Lincolnshire last year. And we were like, we need to get to Thirsk to see the museum. And it's been pulling me in. So we went to Christmas in Northumberland. And I was thinking... We need to try and tag in a day a day trip to Thirsk and a day trip around this museum whilst we're up there coming back down here. And Gary at the same time said, let's have a day trip to Thirsk. So we went and oh my God, I if you love James Herriot, it is a must. It's actually, and this was something I saw yesterday online, it is in the top 10% attractions worldwide. It's, a James, it's called the James Herriot experience the james herriot experience um absolutely amazing it is the best i don't want to call it a museum even though it is it's basically you go into the house where the veterinary surgery was and you go into the house where they all lived etc at different times and literally there's no staff in there so there's no one looking over your shoulder. There's no one intruding. Because a lot of the time, I know when we went to the Bronte Parsonage Museum, oh my God, you would have thought the crown jewels were in there and all of it's fake furniture anyway. That's a, that, that Honestly, if you come to York, we go to Bronte Parsonage Museum, a lot of it's fake furniture. Um, and literally there was stuff everywhere, like... Oh, <laughs> and it puts you off. It put Because they're all lurking and then they're all this... And it's just... It can really just, I can find, I actually find it really disorientating. It's as well, you know, when you put the headphones on in the museum, I can't do all that. I <laughs> drink of people when I go to museums, I can't wear them because it disorientates me. I like to read the plaques if I want to read the plaques or I like to stand, I mean, I mean is it ignorant? <laughs> I don't know, but I can't deal with it. Um, and there was no staff and you literally walk, you get your tickets next door and you walk in and you walk into the front door of the house and it is literally, the, the, the people behind that, well done. Because whoever's behind it, they know how to do a house museum. It was amazing. It was just like he'd gone out and he was going to come back in. The furniture, it was, an, even if you're like into the James Herriot thing, if you're into your post-war houses, like museums, like your old things, you, you go into the kitchen and it's just full of all the old packets and boxes and tins and the table set out like the like they've just gone out for breakfast there's the old washing machine not what would have been a washing machine it'd have been a um, mangle or something like that um honestly amazing and you go upstairs and the upstairs of it's like a museum it's amazing you've got to go if you're interested in it and even if you're outside uk and you're going to come into uk make time to go there especially now whilst it's in the right hands because when a museum in, is in the right hands it's an amazing experience and i was walking around and i just felt him and i really felt him i thought do you know it'd be nice to actually bring him through as a channel but i didn't think anything else of it because he's I just felt as he was a private person. It's not like I think I'm going to channel, I don't know, Anne Boleyn or Diana or whatever. It just felt as though this one needed to, to it just needed something different. Anyway, was back home a couple of days, woke up in the early hours and literally he came into my third eye. And I was like, wow, he wants to be channeled. And I always ask them, what are you going to bring? If, you, if I'm going to, and we're not just going to channel for a gossip. And he's, the words he gave was, I want to talk about Reiki, animals and Reiki and veterinary care. And I was like, oh, because this is a man that was probably not, I can't imagine him being Reiki attuned back in, the, it wouldn't have been Reiki attuned. But this is stuff he's experienced and learned about when he's gone over. So I was like, wow, yeah. Then I fell asleep and I had the weirdest, awfulest dream about the... The, new, the first ever series, the first ever episode and series, oh, I can't even remember the, the actors in it. I don't want to start throwing loads of names around. I think the, the female actress that played his wife was something, drink water or something, and then Linda Bellingham took over. Well, I dreamt about the, the, the first two people that did James and his wife, and it was really seedy. And I woke up the next day and I was like, 
Oh, I never thought the re I thought it was actually, I, I thought it was James Alfred Wright showing me an aspect of his life. And I was actually a bit, oh, I never thought that about him. And I thought, I don't know if I want to channel him because that seemed really dark. It was as though he was opening me up to a, an aspect of his life that we didn't know about. And I thought, that's not what we see in the books. And I thought, I don't really want to bring him through because I don't want all everyone I channel to bring through this heaviness. And I sat with it all day and it was like, King, yes, I remember now. The actor that played James Stewart and the actress that played his wife had an affair. And it really, really caused issues with the filming. When they went off to war in the James Harriet series, when they came back after war, Linda Bellingham came in to play the wife because it kind of imploded. And that's what he was showing me. But what he was showing me was how he was quite disgusted with that affair because what he said was he wasn't that type of man. And the fact that he's... Well, when you create something, be it a video, a book, a piece of artwork, it's your baby. And he feels as though this was his pure, this was something from his soul that he'd given over to books and given over to the TV producers and the actors and actresses. But they muddied it when they had that affair and it feels as though it took him a long, it took him a long time to come back from that seediness. He just feels like a man where that seediness just does not happen. He, he's just not that type of a gentleman. Um, so that's what I was saying. Um, and then I've spoken to him about all different, I mean, he's been coming in and chatting about all kinds of different things. Really interesting man. And he graduated from Glasgow Veterinary College in 1939. He did a series of eight books. The first one was called If Only They Could Talk. And I've written They Will. And they can talk energetically. Um, what else have I written down? So the books are All Creatures Great and Small. All creatures great and small and there's eight books there's there's been um uh, i've got notes on there sorry i hate it when i write things down because it distracts me um there's been a theater production as well all kinds of things it's, it's real big it's real big if you're into your animals and you're into you feel good it's exactly for you so let's have some water Let's get into because the energy seems more calm now. Grand, oh, what was, it? what was it? Father Earth. Father Earth. See, again, we're only ever taught about Mother Earth. And actually, Father Earth is an energy as well. And actually, you can't have both, can you, really? You can't have, you, you've got to have the divine feminine, divine yin and yang. Um, interesting. So, Right, let's bring him in. Well, he's already in, but let's let's open it up. So when Wessie is absolutely surrounded by lots of animals and he's very naturally dressed. He's on he's on the Yorkshire Dales, he's waiting for some of the Yorkshire Dales, he's got a check shirt that's rolled up. He's quite weather beaten, weather beaten face, and he's 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 a mature man, he's mm, late 50s early 60s that's how i'm picking him up at um and all these animals around him are animals that have passed over and that are still with him i know one of the things he shared with me was that he still works with animals in in the is it the rainbow bridge bluebell bridge stuff um so i've got itchy nose again i think i always get this when i'm channeling itchy nose i've been told it's when energies flow him um and he actually helps animals that have all animals that have passed over, specifically animals that have gone through great trauma or great illness or great disease. And he's one of the main people that are waiting at the Passover Bridge to greet them, to look after them. And he's saying, like when we die as people, and I've spoken about this on here, there is an energetic hospital that adults go to. If you've died in a car crash or you've died in an illness or you've died young or you've died in shocking circumstances or in an instant, you've died of an addiction, you go to this energetic hospital in the other realms and you're, you're nursed back to life by your guides, by the beings of light that are there. And it's the same for animals. So when your animal passes over, it, it, whatever circumstance it is, know that they're never alone. 
Because like you're saying, a lot of animal lovers, a lot of people with their pets fear that when their animals go over, like when we go over, there's grandparents and parents and friends and work colleagues and all people from our past. And we think, what happens when my cat goes over? Because we don't know. And he's also saying as well, when animals die, they also find the birth family. So if you've got a puppy or a that grows up and then it dies as an older dog, when the pup, when the dog goes over, they are re you reunited with their with their animal family. That's interesting, isn't it? They're reunited with their animal family. He's saying animals have guides too. And oh, I didn't know that. Animals have guides too. Animals have higher selves. Animals have lower selves. Animals have chakra systems. Animals have energy field. Animals have upgrades. Um, animals receive light codes. Um, animals receive extraterrestrial intelligence, he's saying. He's saying this is something he, he noticed in his times as a vet, especially with the bigger animals. He's showing me horses. Anyone work with horses that can confirm or... He shouts, so I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I asked him, how could you tell, could you tell that? He's saying it was at different times. He said, because where he worked out in Thirsk, he was really in tune with the elements and the weather and the moon. He says, as, as a vet, again, is there, I'm not into animals. So does this resonate that as a vet, back then, or anyone into animals like farmers, would you need to be in tune with the moon? He was in tune with the moon and the sky and the stars and he found that the next day when he'd visit them or just before he said they'd react really differently and he said at some level he secretly believed in all of that he was more comfortable with animals and that than people so say you'd have probably gone round to his house and started talking about extraterrestrials and ghosts and spirits and the paranormal he probably wouldn't have got that but he felt that more with animals he said animals are much more connected the reason why he felt it more with animals is because animals are much top on my head there much more connected there's a bear he's brought a bear in there's a bear there it's having a look around there's a bear that's working its way around um yeah oh, it's an amazing person um animals are much more connected to source than humans in, they, they literally can pick up everything they see ghosts they see they see different beings they can see the dark beings the light beings they are affected by the Schumann resonance and um, they're affected by the earth's movements we're going to come more into this because i want to try and do it in some kind of order interesting interesting so I keep looking out into my garden as well because I'm working with the energy of my garden doing this video as well. So I'm not just staring out into the distance, leaving you all. So let's start talking about the topics. Should we do the topics? I'm going to pull a card for where animals are right now. Where are animals right now? So I'm using the wild wood root, wild wood tarot. So I was just looking what the box was called. Wildwood Tarot, three, three, three. Where James? Could you show me where animals are now? Where the energy of animals are? Where they're at? Insecure, insecurity. They're feeling really insecure. All animals are feeling feeling quite persecuted and insecure at the minute. The adder at the bottom. The adder. Humans need to be so much better. Humans are shocking at the minute. He's just saying it's everything. And he's not he's not been judgy with this because he says you, you, you come to a human experience, you're gonna you're gonna garden and you're gonna ruin a habitat even without realising it. You're gonna go out and you pick up your leaves and you don't realise the damage you're causing. You go out and scoop up your weeds, you don't know the damage you're causing. You go to the supermarket, you don't know. This isn't about judging. This is about we're going to get some big, huge wake up calls as a species that we have got soul contracts for as well. 
about how we treat animals and about how we look after animals okay um what time we got in the can one of the things i picked up before we go in today oh no we're going to talk about that in the we're going to talk about that in the vegan bit right what is the cause no i want to know more about this extraterrestrial with the animals Can we have another card and further explanations is it a certain species he's saying Animals are extraterrestrial. Animals are extraterrestrial. When we all are, we all are. The last cloak, release old identities. A lot of extraterrestrial be beings of light, galactics, they're just in tune. There's something about them. Oh, look at this, star children. No veil, psychic, different, cosmic, inspiration and light. Star children. This is... They're able to journey... You say, I wasn't prepared for any of this. <laughs> Animals are able to journey, like we shamanically journey. They're able to go to the different realms. Animals work energetically as well. They're working in children's hospitals. He said, if you actually realised how kind animals are... We just see some cows in a field and think they're just cows in a field. But actually those cows in the field at night when they're asleep, they're going into children's wards. They're going into places where there's pain. They're going into giving comfort for children that are dying. There seem to be something with animals and children, animals and children. And this bond's only going to get more stronger and more stronger and more stronger. And it's the same with pets. Interesting, right. This is part one. See you in part two. Bye.